Well, we all want to know is what happens when you make a quantum measurement. And the reason why it's interesting is because there's certain things you can see when you make a measurement, like you can see the position of the electron, okay? But quantum mechanics says before you look, there's something completely different, a wave function. And you can think about that wave function as a combination of all the possible places the electron could be, right? A superposition, we say in quantum mechanics. It could be here or here or here, and there's a different probability of seeing it in every place. Now, if you just take the equations of quantum mechanics, the Schrodinger equation, invented by Erwin Schrodinger, which replaces Newtonian mechanics in a, as a dynamical theory, the Schrodinger equation makes an absolutely crystal clear prediction for what happens when you interact with that electron. Namely, that before you interact, there's the electron in a superposition of every place, and you're separate from the electron. But afterward, there's the electron was here and you saw it here, plus the electron was over there and you saw it over there, plus the electron was somewhere else and you saw it somewhere else, for every single possible place you could have seen it. In other words, you yourself evolve into a superposition of having seen the electron everywhere. Now, we've never thought that we were in a superposition, right? No one ever feels like that's what they've seen. So the inventors of quantum mechanics said, well, we're going to pick one of those possible places. You saw it here and the electron was there and say, that's real. What the many worlds version of quantum mechanics says, actually, they're all real, but they can't talk to each other. So before you did the observation, there was one world, the electron was spread out and you were in your state. After, there are many, many worlds. And in each one of those worlds, the electron was in one particular position, and that is where you saw it. So this idea of the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, it's, it's, it's crucially important to emphasize it wasn't invented by starting with quantum mechanics and adding many worlds. It was invented by starting with quantum mechanics and removing some of the weird, bizarre, ad hoc rules that people had invented for dealing with measurement. The many worlds interpretation is simply the idea that the Schrodinger equation is all you need. The same way that quantum systems evolve when you're not looking at them is how they evolve when you are looking at them. That's all you need. It, the theory naturally predicts the existence of many worlds. So the people like me really do believe that that is how things work, at least until someone comes up with a better theory. But it's a perfectly good theory already, so I'm very skeptical that anyone is going to come up with a better theory. And what that means is that you can do a quantum measurement, let's just say of an electron spinning. Forget about whether it is located here or there. It's spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. There's only two choices, okay? So you measure it, and the many worlds theory says there are two worlds now a world in which the electron was moving clockwise and one in which, which was moving counterclockwise. So if you decided ahead of time that if the electron was going clockwise, you would do one thing, and if the electron was going counterclockwise, you would do the other thing, there are now two worlds in which you did those two separate things. You made a choice, right? You asked your loved one to marry you or you didn't ask them to marry you. And you could live very different lives in these two different worlds. The sad part is you can never talk to each other. The worlds are truly separate. They can't interact. There's no phone between these two different parallel worlds. There's a common question, right? How often does the universe branch? The, sadly, the answer is it's not really a good question. We, the, the short answer is we don't know. Okay, that's a perfectly fair answer. But the better answer is it depends. It depends on features of physics that we don't know. For example, we don't know whether the universe contains a finite or an infinite number of quantum mechanical degrees of freedom. And when you, when you put it that way, you know, how should we know that, right? That sounds like something we don't have the right to know. We can't see the whole universe. There's plenty about the universe we don't understand. But if the universe has an infinite number of degrees of freedom, then there are an infinite number of separate quantum worlds. And it's literally happening all the time that one world is branching into an infinite number. But infinity times infinity is still infinity. It's nothing wrong with that. The thing you should think about is the fraction of worlds that look one way versus the fraction that look another way rather than counting the absolute number of worlds. On the other hand, if there are only a finite number of quantum degrees of freedom in the universe, then there are only a finite number of worlds. And that means you can count them. And we don't, still don't know how many there are, but it's a very, very big number. So for example, you can think about in your body, 
there's radioactivity. There's atomic nuclei decaying inside your body about 5,000 times per second. There's a radioactive decay. Every one of those decays branches the universe in two. Okay. So per second, your body is creating two to the power 5,000 different parallel worlds. That is a very, very big number. 